both are in action today. Henry Downey, as I say, returned from Honeymoon in Africa to, to reclaim the centre-back spot, with Kieran McKeever given the wing-back position. Captain Anthony Trogel is once again teamed up with Dermatini in the middle of the park. No Seamus Downey or Joe Brawley among the forwards, but Dermot Dugan is positioned on the 40, with Eamon Burns, Enda Muldoon and Johnny McBride in the inside forward line. And that is uh, an error there which you may have seen Barry Gillis's name go up. It should be Johnny McBride who is going to be playing in the number 15 shirt, playing top or looking Meath back division to begin with. Mark O'Reilly and Darren Fay are guarding the path to call McSullivan's goal. Richie Keelan from the Chocolate is a bright half. And Hank Trainer, that most versatile of players, is allotted the number six shirt. It's like old times in midfield, the usual pairing of John McDermott and Nigel Crawford. Evan Kelly and Roland Fitzsimons link up with Trevor Giles at the half-forward line, while Donald Curtis, who is the head greenkeeper at Navan Golf Course, may very well play in a deeper role in a switch, possibly with either Kelly or Fitzsimons. Let's wait and see what happens there. That earlier in the season, the loss to both Sunana and Sligo en route you know, they certainly have done some resurrecting to get to where they are. In a kind of a horseshoe formation, starting at that point there and going right up along the Cusick stand, over here towards what we call the Hogan stand. I think the plan is to have the Hogan stand name on different levels. So you'll be on the Hogan stand level and a Cusick stand level. I hope it doesn't get confusing on all our final day when you're looking for your seat and you're with... champions are going to play from right to left in the first half. The referee is uh, Garda Superintendent Michael Curley from Galway, of course, he was in charge of the All-Ireland Football Final last year and also was the man in the middle along with uh, an Australian official for Ireland v Australia. So two halves of 35 minutes to determine who will win the Division I National Football League title. And straight away there's a push from behind by Cormac Murphy there on Eamon Burns. Free to Derry. Burns about to take it himself. Tenth year is a Derry senior player. Trying to curl this one inside the right hand post. Never looked to be quite on. First wide of the match. Some people feel that Eamon Burns is one of those players with tremendous talent who has never quite realised what that wonderful gift he was given. Goalkeeper here is Cormac Sullivan, he's 23 years of age. Towards Trevor Giles. Beating Kieran McKeever to this one. Stepping out over the sideline, but he was fouled. Paddy Russell, the uh, linesman, right alongside him. Trevor, dropping it in there, beautifully taken down there under pressure from Marty Locker, feeding it out towards Henry Dunny, surrounded by Mead players straight away, the ball was touched on the ground, and that is a free in for me, Devin Kelly thinking about taking it quickly, but they're probably going to opt to leave this one for Trevor Giles, he's only 25 years of age this year, and already he's won every honour in the game, including a league medal six years ago here. Should be the first point of the match. Usually a most reliable free taker. There was plenty of height. Meade go in front. Trevor Giles from screen. The point scorer.
goalkeeper here is Owen McCluskey, played in uh, 97. Second league final then for the Dungiven man. Taken down well there and straight forward by Ronan Rocks. That's Ender Muldoon. They look at it and it's a beautiful kick by Muldoon from Ballinderry and Tantiderry. He puts the sides level. Tremendous kick by Muldoon. Well, he's a very talented player, this upholsterer. An ideal target man has played a lot of his football in midfield. Ronan Rocks was the one who was creating it for him. Playing it as far as Muldoon. And he got it right between the posts. And spot on. Toho, one-handed down. Gervatini. Feeding it ahead to Toho once again. He started all of that. Trying to keep Hank Trainer away from him. And that's a smashing kick. Two tremendous points by Derry from the same side of the field. And this one credited to Anthony Toho, their captain from Swatra. Well, they're getting a lot of change out of that left half back side of the Meath defence. This was fed ahead from one midfielder to another. Heaney on for Toho, who started it by breaking the ball down initially, taking it inside. Hank Trainer and a smashing point. A really good start to the match. That's a great catch by John McDermott. Played through the centre by Hank Trainer. In there to grab her ever is David O'Neill. Missed about a year of his football because of illness. And something happened after that ball was kicked away and the referee's going in to check with his umpire's Martin, did you get a look at that? Yeah, what happened there as far as I could see is the ball broke out for him. Garrity had a little bit of a rattle there at Sean Marty Lockhart. Now maybe there's a little bit of a legacy there from the game in Celtic Park, but I think probably uh, Graham Garrity will have his name taken in this situation. So the referee coming out and uh, calling aside Graham Garrity. And it looks like it's going to be a yellow card possibly for both men. Sean Marty Lockhart is number three. And Graham Garrity number 14. Garrity from Pentelstown. Meanwhile, play can continue from uh, close to the middle of the field. Referee looks like he's going to throw the ball in. Tohill is in there available. Nigel Crawford was there as well. Comes back to Kieran McKeever. Under pressure, Darren Fay going backwards. Chased by Ender Muldoon. Richie Keeley was available. Out to John McDermott. And they play themselves out of trouble with uh, simple passing movements and lots of movement off the ball as well. McDermott. Inside towards Ollie Murphy, breaks away, comes out to Henry Downey. The man is just back from his honeymoon. That's Johnny McBride, Captain Derry in a successful under-21 All-Ireland final three years ago against me. Beautifully caught here. Benny Murray going forward, part of that under-21 team. Bills out here. Ronan for Simons. Here's Graham Garrity. Challenged by Sean Marty Lockhart. For Simons once again. Lockhart and uh, Garrity are on the ground. They're back up once more. And for Simons with a rather pain shot at the end of all of that. He's a very good young footballer, Ronan Fitzsimons, as a newcomer, but he won Player of the Year in the North American Championship last year, playing for St. Brendan's in Chicago. <laughs> McCluskey belting it to midfield. Well, confirmation of the early bookings in this match.
McDermott in the 68th National Football League final. Inside towards Murphy, and Murphy has put it over the bar. He got a goal and a point, of course, before being sent off in the league match against the uh, same opposition. And that's his first of the day. So the match is tied up at two points apiece. It's got the making for an intriguing final. Yes, one of the things actually that is noticeable is that Derry are forsaking their normal short passing game and they're letting the ball travel long actually into the full forward line. And the two scores that they got early on were as a result of long kicking, which is not usual with them. Dugan playing it through. Picked up here by Muldoon. He's going for another one. Oh! He's just put it wide. There wasn't a great deal in that. Just a little to the left but unable to add to his one point so far. Well, Muldoon is one of those target men with uh, great hands. He's mobile, he's a good passer, and as you can see, he's got a very fine physique as well. Touchdown here by Dermot Dugan. And I think Toll is feeling his face there after that. Kieran McKeever coming forward. Well, it's interesting that Kieran McKeever has come out to take up the number five position. He used to be the corner back. And, uh, well, he is uh, a very senior man at this stage, playing in his fifth National League final. Actually, Kieran McKeever is doing a man-to-man -man marking job on Trevor Giles. He felt that. McDermott. Still coming forward, the Irish captain in Australia. Taken down by David O'Neill. And that's going to be a free intervene. And it's going to be Trevor Giles who will take it. One point to his credit so far. who came back from a career-threatening knee injury. Trying to get enough bend on this, but uh, not quite measuring it. But he was the player who certainly, in my mind, led the, uh, the comeback of me in that semi-final down at Semple Stadium just two weeks ago against Kerry. McCluskey, the goalkeeper here for Derry. He's uh, a nephew of Plunkett Murphy. You may remember him from Derry teams. In his first 10 matches for Derry, Owen didn't concede a goal. Not a good kick out. Evan Kelly's coming forward. Needs support. He's still going through. No, he doesn't need support. He can do it on his own on his left foot. Tremendous point. And the Derry fan salute his excellence. Well, he was another player sprung from the bench that day in the National League semi when they seemed to be going nowhere fast. But he came through together with a number of others and made a marked contribution. He's got it again. And it's actually the last two kickouts that um, Owen Dukotsky has given. He's given them straight out to Evan Kelly. And that seems to be a weakness in his game, actually, that some of his kickouts tend to drop short. And well, that foul on Richie Keeley is going to result in yet another free kick for Trevor. So Trevor Giles, just inside the 45-meter line. And this one has also gone right. Couple miss now in this match. He's got one point so far, and Meade having a one-point lead. Well, this time the kick out is delivered down through the centre, but it's won back once again here by Anthony Toho. Got a bit late there, I think. And the referee is going to award a free from where the ball has landed. 
for the foul on Toto. That will bring it close to the 20-meter line, but away out of the left-hand side. I think actually what happened in that stage is that Ronan Fitzsimons did a foot lock on Anthony Toll and over the top of him and actually it, it, it hurt Toll and I think the referee quite rightly gave the kick from where the ball landed. So Derry now with this chance of uh, levelling up the match. Ronan rocks over there. And that has gone wide. No joy coming from the free kick. Cormac Sullivan. Nigel Crawford beaten for this one by the fist of Toho. Fed ahead here to Evan Kelly. Inside, towards Donald Curtis, a very clever footballer. And even as I say it, uh, he puts it wide of the target. He'll be very disappointed. Because in the last match, these fans here will have seen him set up a most brilliant goal for Ollie Murphy and score the second. Two Mead men rising up for that one against Anthony Tohill. Oh, touched on the ground. Three to Mead. Trevor Giles looking to see what options are open to him. He was trying to target Graham Geraghty. Saw Marty Lockhart's in there. Bit of pushing and shoving. Henry Downey trying to restrain Graham Geraghty. Referee stepping in quickly to restore order. Ball we throw here. Nigel Crawford is the lead player involved. Still Crawford on the ground there trying to get that ball away somehow. Geraghty towards Evan Kelly. Bit of work to do here. Fair going across to him there was Niall McCusker, only 19 years of age. And that has been kicked wide. Yeah, so far, actually, the game is devoid of any great excitement. And when you see it, like in the first 15 minutes of the game, nine wide between the two teams, I mean, it indicates actually how scrappy and how poor quality we've had up to, th up to now. Yeah, there's absolutely no denying that, although it did start really well. Giles, Ooh, he felt that, up to take the free kick himself quickly and he had some options available to him, one of the Simons was peeling away to his right, playing it instead towards Donald Curtis, missed an earlier one, transferred to Ollie Murphy, inside towards Graham Garrity and Shaw Mucky Lockhart's out there, linking up with McCluskey once again, Tohill is way back there to help out, a long clearance towards Eamon Burns. Inside here. Johnny McBride. They carry it forward towards Benny Murray. Murray needing the assistance there of Dermot Heaney. John McDermott trying to put in a challenge, but uh, well, Heaney was far closer to the corner flag than the left post of the goal. Shooting not up to standard. Well, the crowd have been enjoying the sunshine, if not indeed the uh, glorious football so far. And nearly 17 minutes gone, as you can see. Toho leaving it there this time to John McDermott. Ronan Fitzsimons. Still plenty of work to do there. 
It was Hans Kramer coming through for me. This was Sean Marty Lockhart going out for Jerry. This is left to Trevor Giles. Inside to Donald Curtis. Belting it in there, but uh, bit of work once more for Graham Geraghty just to keep it in play this time. And Lockhart bleeding down his neck. Good work by Graham Geraghty. Making a better angle for himself, but it's gone wide. It would have been some point because he had to work so hard to make it possible in the first place. One thing actually that is noticeable about Trevor Giles' free kicks, normally he sends them in long into an isolated situation where Graham Garrity and Nolly Morton will be. Three occasions today actually he sent them short instead to Donald Curtis, so maybe he's just trying to vary the situation somewhat. Toe Hill, just about toe poking it ahead that time. One back here by Hank Trainer, McDermott. And the ball being hit rather aimlessly forward. That's Gary Coleman, son of the manager, getting it away. Towards Dermot Heaney. Getting support here and assistance from Niall McCusker. And it's spilled away from the defender there. Comes back out towards Paddy Reynolds. Current All-Star. Dispossessed by Benny Murray. And Murray is fouled by Reynolds. It's going to be a free into Derry. Chance for Derry then to draw level in this Church and General National League final. Well, the free taker Raymond Burns is going to take this one. He missed the last. This should be, and indeed is. So Raymond Burns with his first pointed free of the match. Um, the teams are level here at Krug Park. Well, you could do with that drink on a day like this. The attendance today, I would estimate around about uh, 26, 27,000. Cormac Sullivan, sales representative, goalkeeper for Meath, belting it to midfield. Taken down there by Ronan Fitzsimons. He played at corner forward in the match against Kerry and was withdrawn. John McDermott, poor kick once again, straight to Kieran McKeever. Up towards Eamon Burns. Paul McMurphy coming in and the referee says using an elbow. Burns taking the free kick quickly inside towards Ender Muldoon. Darren Fay was committing himself. In the end it all went rather harmlessly wide of the target. Well, in case you have joined us uh, late, Laos have won the opening match here, which was the Division II National League final, beating Offaly by 113 to 13 points. And that's a big match up there between Kieran McKeever and Trevor Giles. Evan Kelly trying to steal through in the half-forward line. Space at a premium. Hank Trainer likes to come forward time and again. Wing back at last is All Ireland. McCluskey comes out, needs to hold on to it. In the end, he was uh, fortunate enough to get the free kick. Seemed to drop the ball down, but the referee was saying he was being uh, belted as he was coming out. A use of a fist. An injury to uh, one of the Meath players, Evan Kelly from Drumree. Well, Evan Kelly is okay, but uh, 
Jeffrey McGonigal is uh, about to be brought in. Yes, he looks to be warming up actually, and I'd say he might be coming into the Derry attack in the corner at the moment. I know him stretching down there at the far side of the ground. He's a big man. He's the guy who made the goal, of course, in the Ulster final two years ago for Joe Brolly. Muldoon is fumbling this one. Darren Fay trying to get it away. Paul McMurphy over there. And in the end, they decide that he's been fouled and it's going to be a free out to the All-Ireland champions. The Derry fans not quite agreeing. I think they felt Murphy fell on the ball and then touched it on the ground. Darren Fay is from Trim. Drawn in there beautifully by Fitzsimons. Very promising young player. Towards Ollie Murphy against Gary Coleman. Murphy, he's got such pace. Played inside here. Man in the corner is Donald Curtis. They managed to get it back towards Ronan Fitzsimons, but they lose it. Over elaboration. And in the end, a bit of frustration, and Derry managed to get a free kick. Yes, that was an excellent bit of defending, actually, by three Derry defenders, because they forced both Curtis and Ollie Murphy away out of the side in each case, and eventually won the free. That bounced over Eamon Burns' head. Darren Fay belting the free kick towards Evan Kelly. John McDermott is moving away to his left-hand side. Graham Garrett has come way out from full forward. Sean Marty Lockhart's there as well. In beyond Darren Fay this time. That's Mark O'Reilly. Such a talent. Player who won a couple of Sigerson Cup medals in the colours of the Pervy Institute of Technology. And of course all Ireland medals as well in 96 and 99. The free to be taken by Faye. Touchdown here towards Trevor Giles who seems to have switched across towards that right hand side and he takes too much time over that. And it's going to be a free for Derry. And Jeffrey McGonigal has just come in to the Derry attack as we expected. Johnny McBride, I think, is the one who's made way. This is Dermot Heaney on his left-hand side. He sweeps it, and it's swept beautifully over the bar. Player from Castle Dawson in Derry. Giving Derry the lead. Four points to three. Actually, one of the common features of all of the Derry points has been that they've been taken from long distance. But me to be very happy so far in this half. They're only a point, uh, only a point behind actually playing against quite a strong gale or against quite a strong wind actually. And Derry really need to be putting a couple of more scores on the board for the second half. Well, I anticipate that both teams will probably use up uh, their full allocation of five substitutes in this. Derry can't afford to have any injuries at the result of the match facing into Cavan next uh, Sunday nor can they risk anybody getting sent off that's up towards Ender Muldoon played back out towards Eamon Burns it's well held on to Muldoon fighting it in there possibilities here Ronan Ross and it's saved brilliantly by Cormac Sullivan it's gone over the bar but there was a goal there and Ronan Rocks will be a little disappointed but he's got a point at least well he's a prodigious talent huge leaper in the air this fellow Ronan Rocks if you watch him this time he didn't need to do any jumping about he was able to go by Darren Fay with his sheer resolution strength and commitment and a great save by Cormac Sullivan but a point does result so that's two points in a row now for Gary and they lead by five points to three. Oh, oh no. great fielding, super. Here's Henry Downey, steadying in front of centre half back. Fay is beaten for this one, Muldoon plays it through. Still they come forward, opportunities here and Tower is in, and he scores! 
goal by Anthony Toho. 27 minutes gone in the first half. A great sweeping movement. And Derry have now got the last three scores in this game. A goal and two points. He was coming onto it beautifully. Great shot right into the corner. Sullivan had little chance. Derry are playing splendidly here. And that was a wonderful goal. I think what should be appreciated also is that Tohill fielded that ball in the first instance before he got the short pass and eventually was at the end of it to finish it off. It's a marvellous goal. Now the Royal County. They've got four weeks in which to prepare for the challenge of Offaly in the Championship. They can afford to go for it. Murphy may do so. And Gav! Two goals in the space of a minute. Ollie Murphy. You cannot give him any space whatsoever. Remember how he tormented Dublin in last year's Leinster final. Here he was, stealing inside his marker, Gary Coleman, and beating Owen McCluskey. He is the typical predator, a corner forward. One bounce, one kick, one go. The match comes alive. Only two between them. Seven minutes to go to half-time or thereabouts. Typical need response. As soon as they're hurt, they'll come back at you. Tremendous, uh, tremendous score by Ali Murphy. And again, so important for a defender to stay on his feet. And Gary Coleman, in that, in that case, to his cost, fell and allowed Murphy the room to get the goal. It was a spirited start to the match. It went dead for a while. My goodness, it's come alive again. Here's Anthony Tohill, kicking from 47 metres out. Darren Fay and John McDermott back there. Henry Downey under this dropping ball, about to be challenged by Graham Geraghty. Dermatini is in an advanced position. Ooh, that's one I think he'll feel he should have put over the bar. It's a bad miss. He was left in isolation. He had sufficient space and sufficient time. So, just over five minutes to the break. Actually, since that, uh, since the Lee's goal, the Derry cornerbacks have switched. I think David O'Neill is now marking Ollie Murphy, and Gary Coleman has come over and done his purpose. Betty Murray has got it back. Here's Kieran McKeever coming up from the wing back position. Dermot Dugan, another good man to get a goal, given the chance, Ronan Rocks, turning inside decisively, played back here towards Eamon Burns, here's Jeffrey McGonigal, the holder and the footballer, and a powerful man, stopped by Cormac Sullivan, Trevor Giles is back there, around the half-back position, Paddy Reynolds, lifting it out towards Ali Murphy, David O'Neill, just stumbling a little bit. Henry Downey. Feeding it to Toha. There's assistance and support. Oof. O'Neill wasn't expecting that one to come from McKeever. It really is worth emphasising what a very hot afternoon it is in Croke Park. So it's energy sapping. That's not a good clearance. Gary Coleman put under pressure by his own man David O'Neill by playing it across the park that time instead of making the simple clearance this is Evan Kelly and that's a point a second point for Evan Kelly and really the Derry management I'm sure will be hammering home the message clear the ball out of defence when you have the simple opportunities of doing it very true Jared they had four opportunities that time to clear the ball but they played the ball from one to the other and eventually the fabulous pressure by the lead forward resulted in that ball going to Evan Kelly who scored a second point of the afternoon only one between them <laughs> Kelly is still in there but this time he's deemed to have fouled Niall McCusker McCusker is only uh, 19 years of age, made his senior debut last year in the championship against Cavan. Sean Boylan's on his feet over there. There's attention from the uh, physio for Evan Kelly. 
Michael Curley very much a high profile football referee this kick to be taken by Kieran McKeever going short this time here's Ronan Rocks and again there's a bit of excitement on the far side because of the injury to the Derry player Cormac Murphy, not Cormac Murphy, rather it's uh, Richie Keeley who has spoken to, I think, there by the referee. And there's a yellow card. Referee says, back you come, back you come. Free kick the other way. Well, it looked like it was Richard Keeley who got the yellow card, but I have to confirm that. I think it is. And all of that in front of an attendance confirmed of 25,743. Tohill to take this free kick. Familiar approach. Familiar style. Usual result. He's having a very good match. So that's a goal and two points now for the Derry captain. And just a minute or thereabouts of the first half remaining. <laughs> Sullivan. McDermott. Still trying to find his best form, I feel. Just lacking a bit of sharpness because he didn't play in the league up to the uh, semi-final, but he came on as a sub. Reynolds inside towards Murphy is as sharp as ever, dragged down, causing problems for David O'Neill. Free in to me. A chance to get within a point. So once again, this physiotherapist will take the free. It really is a perfect afternoon for football. First 35 minutes almost up. One successful three from three so far. That's two from four. And now he's put the All-Ireland champions within a point of Derry. This should be a cracking second half. It's uh, certainly got better as the game has gone on. Meath playing in their fourth deep final. Derry playing in their ninth. But who will take the title? Nigel Crawford feeding it in as far as the man in the centre, Ronan Fitzsimons. Now Paddy Reynolds. Challenged by Henry Downey, but dragged somewhat, and the referee says, free downfield. Once again, it's going to be Giles to take this. Graham Geraghty, who we hit it a bit early, had a bit more time, and the referee says that's it in terms of time at the end of the opening 35 minutes. Little between the teams, only a point at the break. Anthony Toll with a goal after 27 minutes, a goal and two points is Tally. Wonderful for a midfield player. And Ollie Murphy is ever getting a goal. A minute after that, Toe has scored. A goal and a point for him so far. And at Croke Park in the Church in General National Football League Division 1 final, it's Derry 1-6, Meath 1-5. The big crowd will have lots to talk about. We'll have lots to talk about as well during the halftime interval. All of the action from Croke Park coming up right after the break. Well, in the first half, 13 scoring chances each. But it's 1-6 for Derry, 1-5 for Meath. Six wides each as well. 
and Michael Curley gets the second half underway. Straight away it's Dermatini. Henry Downey. Good run forward here by Dermot Dugan. Hank Trainer trying to close him down, keep him away from scoring an easy point. But there's good support there going through was Benny Murray. And it's going to be a free in. Free on the 13 meter line. Teams have been level on three occasions so far in the game. So Jeffrey McGonagall, it seems, fancying his chances from the hands. A very accomplished hurler as well. And he manages to uh, stretch the Derry lead. Getting his first point since coming on as a substitute. And you remember what uh, Joe Brawley said about him after he laid on the pass that uh, won the match with a Brawley goal in the last minute of the 98 Ulster final. He had an A on him. I won't say the word, like a bag of cement. Only Brawley could say these things and get away with it. Here's John McDermott. That's a very fine kick. Great kick by John McDermott. of the uh, match at this stage John his fitness is a little below what it will be in a few weeks time that we can be certain of but that's because of the very long layoff since the Australian series Dermatini pushing it through in towards the inside forward line to Muldoon Rox was coming forward and Rox was uh, well, he's down on the ground right now, and they're appealing for a free in, but Michael Curley has said, no, it's a free the other way. Too many steps were taken. I think a number of the Derry players are incensed because they believe that John McDermott followed through there with a, with, um, a shoulder charge on the Derry forward as he, uh, as he took the shot. This is Ronan Rocks going through. Uh, they were claiming but he took far too many steps with it before steadying himself and then watch what happens next John McDermott was coming in and he did indeed foul Ronan Rocks but the whistle had gone and unless the referee has been in consultation with his umpires and they give him a clear indication of what happened it looks like it's going to be a free out whereas it might be a hot ball or a throw ball it's going to be a free to me Rocks feeling the pain of it all. He was a wonderful underage player, Ronan Rocks. Took a while to make it at the senior level. Here comes Donald Curtis, firing this one beautifully. Great point by the man from Rath Kenny. That's his first point of the match. And it's the equaliser. Well, he's a player you can play in almost any position. You can play him as they have played him in the past, at wing back, wing forward. Today, he's figuring in the number 15 shirt, and that trusty left boot slots it over the crossbar. Nigel Crawford fisting it down, anticipating, however, was Dermot Dugan. Hopefully through there towards Ender Muldoon, wins the race against Darren Fay, when the ball is played ahead of him there, He's got a fair chance of getting it. It does so most times. Once again, it's Ronan Rocks. Taking on Richie Keeley. Oh, it's a poor ball. Never really gave the inside forwards a chance, but going down on it and touching it on the ground was Hank Trainer. Hence the free in and exchanges there between Dermot Dugan and Darren Fay. Actually, one tactic that is working for Derry is the long ball and the quick ball going through to Ender Muldoon. He's giving Darren Fay quite a hard time of it, actually. He's managing it out in front of him all the time and it's causing quite a amount of difficulty for the mid defence. Anthony Towell, the top player, I think, from the first half. 
this is where he can push Jerry in front again. It curves beautifully. A goal and three points now for Anthony Toho. It's a very, very good performance. Well, Jerry have used three free takers so far. They're three from four, from four, three from five from three so far. And that's a useful enough return. Oh, well, McDermott has dropped it down again. Dugan. Playing it short as far as Dermot Heaney. And he gives that away rather cheaply to Hank Trainer. Darren Fay. Gifted once more. Ball being given away a bit too easily. Dermot Dugan. Again, Mead win it back. Fay linking up with Hank Trainer. But Simon's beaten for it by Henry Downey. Kieran McKeever. A couple of players almost getting in one another's way, but uh, there's a possibility here. Back it comes towards Eamon Burns. Trying to say dummy, he's holding on to it. Paddy Reynolds, resilient, and there's uh, an overholding offence there on the part of the half forward. Three out to me. Again, it's a great bit of defending by Paddy Reynolds, putting pressure on his opponent that time, and he fully deserved to get the free out. I think not an awful lot of people at time to see the great work that players like Paddy Reynolds, and Reynolds in particular, do. Very disciplined, cautious in their approach, determined at the same time, but always knowing what the object of the exercise is. This is the 15th free of the match for me. And once again, it will be entrusted to Trevor Charles. Two points from three so far. Cushioning breeze just behind him right now, although blowing a little diagonally. And he's spotted absolutely beautifully. He gets his third. And the teams are level once again. One of the things about Trevor Giles today, he's been less influential than, uh, than usual, and it's a credit probably to the man-to-man -man marking that Kieran McKeever is doing on him. And as a consequence, I think the display of uh, Graham Garrity in the full forward line is, is suffering because he's not getting the supply. Crawford, wonderful fielding. It's taken by David O'Neill. John McDermott under this time. And the frontal charge by Anthony Toho, the referee decide. Merits a free to the Royal County. Giles. Oh, he's such a good passer of the ball. Garrity had come out. And this time they were playing and wondering what that decision was for. I think actually if the referee is asking that to be retaken, he should be throwing the ball up because the kick was taken from the wrong position. This time it's not a good pass. First one was a beauty. Here's Gary Coleman. In towards Ender Muldoon. Runs on beyond him. Hank Trainer is back there. The centre half back this afternoon. He used to be up on the wings. Paddy Reynolds. Donald Curtis. Hooping it up Gary Owen style. Evan Kelly falls over. McKeever chases. And it's got to be Meade's ball. Giles trying to replicate his earlier action, trying to pick out the corner forward. But that time it's kicked away, but only as far as Richie Keeley. Evan Kelly, the angle shot. That's got a touch in it, and it's the game's first 45 of this match. Again, as we've seen many times today, 
teams are putting pressure on themselves by poor placing of the ball from the defence. And th that particular clearance there nearly resulted in a goal from Evan Kelly. Nigel Nestor is just being brought on to the main team. Player going off, Richie King. Come on, lads, that's it. Come the game. So number 19, Nigel Nestor has come in there. Trevor Giles, hoofing it off the post. Derry trying to group well, Dermot Heaney is back there. David O'Neill, fisting it across the face of his goal. They get it out as far as Toho. Wonderful movement. Great cohesion. Opting to go long after all of that, but into space. Benny Murray is prepared to chase after it, and so too Darren Fay. And Fay having the presence of mind to let it out harmlessly over the end line. Eleven and a half minutes into the second half. Game tied up. They are certainly getting championship type weather this afternoon. And it's such a tight match. And what a great catch once again by Tohel. Dermot Dugan coming back. Just playing a little off the uh, center field players. Not much McGonagall could do about it. Cormac Murphy. John McDermott taking it down, turning. Ending it towards Curtis, he gets it back from Evan Kelly. Donald Curtis, not a good kick. In towards the empty terraces of what is uh, known as the Canal End. So will it be Meade's eighth National League title or Derry's fifth? McDermott breaking it down to himself. Trevor Giles playing it beautifully inside towards Evan Kelly. Lovely little touch that time. Back to McDermott. Stolen away from him by Kieran McKeever. The impish number five. Out it comes here towards Ronan Rocks. Away they come once again. It's McKeever. Former cornerback. Inside towards Muldoon. Back out to McKeever once more. Lofting it inside. Trying to get Burns in on this one. And Sullivan's out quickly. Just as Benny Murray was trying to steal in. Now Nigel Nestor. McDermott. Towards Graham Garrity. The supply interim this afternoon hasn't been particularly good. Back to Nestor it comes. Coming forward once again is Fitzsimons. Now Graham Garrity, ah, that was a chance for him. Well, oh, he's missed it and missed it very badly. Groans from the Meath fans. They realised that was a fairly simple scoring chance. In many respects, that wide of Graham Garrity there sums up his day. He's not having the best of days, primarily because the supply isn't good and also because John Mar Sean Marty Lockhart is actually marking him very, very tightly. Well, Meade so far have made nine of 20 scoring chances. I think the players every so often taking uh, very sensibly a chance to get a breather whenever possible because of the intense heat. Curtis and uh, Paddy Russell has the flag raised across on the far side. Who referee the 1990 and 1995 All Ireland football finals? So it's going to be the postman from Maharafelt, Gary Coleman, who will take this. Benny Murray. Phil McEver was fouled as he was trying to take that ball beyond Paddy Reynolds. Derry with the free. Rocks 
dispossessed by Nigel Lester, but Lester touched it last. Derry get the sideline kick. And that's just to confirm the substitution made about two and a half minutes ago. Jeffrey McGonigal signalling his intentions. And Muldoon steps out over the end line. Not sure whether the intentions were to go for the point himself or link up with his full forward. He hasn't been a major threat so far. Great tussle in midfield. Nigel Crawford, another one of those underestimated fine footballers. Evan Kelly, ooh, straight at Henry Downey. Taking it forward is Ronan Rock. Trainer going in to try and take it from him. Leeds player on the ground, Derry player falls as well in the end. So look around the field, there's another Derry player down. And their big concern, of course, is going to be injuries. Benny Murray, I think, is the uh, player who is down in need of... Well, he's up on his feet once again as we... Uh, watch this but this was Benny Murray going through that was Hank Trainer coming after him and already before that uh, a Meath player had uh, hit the deck as they say well they bring out the uh, medical officers for uh, Derry Sean Moran and Dr Ben Glancy The last thing they can afford to risk, of course, is to lose a highly influential player. Eamon Coleman's out on the field as well, standing right alongside the um, tall Anthony Tohill. There he is, just coming into picture. Actually, one of the things about the second half is, in a sense, replicating the same trend as you had in the first half, where we had a very good beginning, but now the game has somehow gone a little bit flat. It's about seven or eight minutes since we had the last score. And okay, maybe this is going to put an end to it if uh, Jeffrey McGonigal puts a free over the bar. But um, there seems to be a problem at the moment with uh, Benny Murray there, who seems to have a difficulty with his knee. This is what happened just moments ago here. Oops, that's where they clashed. Well, this is Ender Muldoon who was receiving the attention. very very fine footballer and uh, as I said earlier the last thing they want is anybody taking knocks out of this they certainly don't want to risk that with a week to go to their opening Ulster Championship match and of course the week after that it's not particularly widely known but there are no matches whatsoever on Jeffrey McGonigal takes this puts it over the bar and Jeffrey's now got two And Derry go back into the lead once again. Yeah, end of the the player actually was down in the middle of the park. And he seems to have switched now out into the middle of the field with Dermot Heaney, who's now gone in and pulled forward on Darren Fay. Surprises me a little bit because Muldoon had been doing so well on Darren Fay earlier. Especially when the ball was played in cleverly, right in front of him. I mean, if you played up into the clouds, Fay will get everything. Here's Evan Kelly. Pisted away momentarily by McKeever. Graham Geraghty coming on to it here. Driving this one in, possibilities, but Klatsky does really well. Good goalkeeper. Fed back. Out to McKeever. Here's Dermot Dugan. Great deal of movement and mobility about this Derry team right now. Henry Downey. Such an inspiring captain in the past. This year's captain is Toher. Here's Jeffrey McGonigal. Plenty of players moving in ahead of him. Sullivan drops it, but recovers. Say. Played ahead towards Nigel Nestor. Played in the All-Ireland winning team against Cork. September last year. Well, Ollie Murphy looking at the referee, but I think he just lost his balance. David O'Neill getting it away. 
Here's Tohill, 15 minutes remaining of the church in general. National Football League Final Division 1. Rocks. Eamon Burns going very low. O'Reilly was in trying to close him. McDermott getting it ahead. Trevor Giles spotting the option of Hank Trainer. Jersey tugging. It was Gary Coleman who was pulling back the main player. Free reaches. Graham Garrity. Crawford. It's a huge one. It's a very good point by Nigel Crawford from St. Peter's in Dunboyne. He really is playing his part. Son of Brendan Crawford, originally from the Arts, but instantly he played hurling and football for uh, Down and for me, his dad. But his son is an All-Ireland Senior Medal winner and now looking to get a National League medal as well. Teams are level. Giles, good fielding. Such a commanding figure. Great ball in once again. This is down by Murphy. Coming on to it here is Paddy Reynolds. The left half back. John McDermott's inside waiting. Comes out instead towards Evan Kelly. And Derry get it away. Well, it really is anybody's final. Okay, so the second half is particularly low scoring. But it's a tight competitive match. Tohill, a huge one inside towards Jeffrey McGonagall. And Cormac Murphy deemed to have been holding him back by the hand. You can hold Jeffrey's hand if you want, but nobody's going in on goal like that. Yeah, I think if it's a, if it's a six of one and a half, a dozen of the other, I think. But Jeffrey got the benefit of the referee's call in that, in, in that situation. So up steps the tall figure of Anthony Tohill. Player who uh, moved to Australia before he was out of minor ranks and I think would have had a very bright future in Australian rules football but he opted to come back came back into a very successful Derry minor team and I think he feels a bit disappointed that during the 90s they didn't achieve an awful lot more with a very very talented group of players it's another point by Anthony Tohill He's now got a goal and four points in this National Football League final. And Derry lead by a point. Twelve minutes remain. Derry at this stage have introduced two subs actually, which is unusual at the same time. Both Ryan Dugan and Seamus Downey. And I can't see at the moment who has gone off. I think Gary Coleman is one of them. Famous Downey had been troubled by an Achilles tendon injury. Eamon Burns is the other, by the way. Meanwhile, the pressure applied here by Ronan Fitzsimons. And a super kick off his left boot. He's another very useful addition to the Meath panel for this year's championship. But right now, having tied up the match, he's thinking about a league medal. 110 to 110. Downey down towards Dermot Heaney. Here's Seamus Downey arriving. One of the stars from 1993. Beautifully played inside to Ronan Rocks. Trying to skip away from the challenges, and that's a smashing point. Well, he was denied a goal earlier on, but got a point at that occasion following a super save by Cormac Sullivan. He's got a second point here, and Derry have a one point lead once again. But can they keep their noses in front against the All-Ireland champions? Meath, so strong usually at the finish of matches. They have this wonderful sense of challenge and commitment, not to mention exhilarating footballing skills. 
Oh, Jeffrey McGonagall there was looking for something as he tangled with the legs of Paul McCarthy. And I think the referee says, hang on a while, you were just both going for the same ball and it was accidental. McKeever's under this one. What a catch by the little man. He goes down. They come off the bench straight away and inquire about an elbow. Nigel Crawford, I think, is the one who might be in trouble here, but the referee is also observing Eamon Coleman and Trevor Giles exchanging some words. Well, we really have to see that again to make absolutely sure. But McCleaver was under that dropping ball beautifully. Graham Geraghty is the one who's been spoken to, not Nigel Crawford, and it's Graham Geraghty who's got a second yellow, and he has been sent off. Nine minutes remain. This is what happened. Crawford was challenging, but it was Geraghty who caught McKeever, and off he goes. What was interesting actually about that sending off is that the referee just showed a red card, didn't show a yellow and a red, so it means that probably he was booked earlier on. He was booked earlier yeah. on. So they've got to play the remaining eight and a half to nine minutes without their influential captain, Graham Geraghty. Derry leading by a point. This is gathered in here beautifully by Nigel Nestor. You know it can be so difficult to uh, beat 15 men when there are 14 of these men out there. It can be just as difficult. They'll fight for one another. Cormac Murphy breaking it down. It stumbles away there of uh, Dermot Dugan. Last player up was Darren Fay. Meath have won all Ireland's with 14 players. Murphy's free kick, or Sullivan's free kick, rubbish, I should say. Niall McCusker, the 19-year-old. Back towards Dugan, of Toho. Finally, Ronan rocks. All a little bit clumsy. Well, it's a chance for Derry, and their fans will appreciate that. They have the lead. They have the extra man. Seven minutes to go. Well, Sullivan's kick right into midfield, picked out by Hank Trainer. Sean Marty Lock out trying to win it back there in the company of Ryan Dugan. Derry have the free kick. Toe Hill. There's McKeever. Once again, it's Ronan Rocks trying to torment Darren Fay. Dugan. Go outside towards Benny Murray. Dugan couldn't take it in his stride, however. The mean backs are so good at working together, cooperating, helping out, foraging, never giving up. There's McDermott. Fisted away by the Delhi fullback. Still less pressure as Evan Kelly is tugged and pulled back by Kieran McKeever. And there's a free in. And a chance of the equaliser. This is a typical response from me, down to 14 players, they double their efforts at this stage, and again you saw, saw the determination of Evan Kelly in that situation, winning the ball, earning the free, and Trevor Giles more than likely will convert it now. It's Meade's 19th free kick, Giles 3 from 5 so far. He's got his fourth, and the teams are level. 
Well, it's the most competitive and most entertaining National Football League final. Mead 111, Derry 111. Five minutes to play. Well, if it does end up level, the replay will be on Saturday, the 20th of May. Ronan Rocks. <laughs> Stealing in there was Evan Kelly. Blocked down by Henry Downey. Toehill. And Evan Kelly was pulling and dragging and all the rest of it. Derry had the free kick and Curtis shaping up there to Anthony Toehill. Good ball out there towards Ryan Dugan. Not the best of passes inside, however. Meade simply mopping up everything like a hoover. Up towards Ali Murphy. We haven't seen much of him in the second half. David O'Neill struggling to get it away, but he was being held back unfairly. Free kick is very smartly taken. Ender Muldoon. Dermot Heaney chases after this, and uh, in the end, I think, think it went off his body. Trevor Giles was beside him as well. Big smile on their faces, too, as they both got up off the ground. I think they're enjoying it enormously. Good game of football. Crawford. Anthony Toho. John McDermott about to challenge. Still Toho. Trying to measure it forward out towards Seamus Downey, but uh, not an easy one for Downey to take. I'll tell you something, Martin. If I didn't know it, I would say Meath have 16 players, not 14. Very much as they've brought everybody back into their own half of the field. Ali Murphy is up there more or less on his own inside the 50-yard line. And it's a typical Meath performance. They're gritting their teeth, they're redoubling their efforts, and they're making life very, very difficult for any Derry player who gets possession. It's still level, however. 111 to 111. Three minutes to go. Darren Fay booting it away downfield. This time, Derry dig deep. Try to get that ball back. Referee having to step in here. Here comes Ryan Dugan once again. Seamus Downey getting support here from Dermot Heaney on his left hand side moving forward menacingly back towards McCusker nice ball outside end of Muldoon curling it and putting it over the bar a second point from Muldoon from Ballanderry that's a marvellous use of the extra man Muldoon is played at midfield at the moment drifted away in the blind side of, uh, of that attack took the pass there and pulled it over, over beautifully into the wind. And Jody Devine has come into the uh, Meath team in place of Ronan Fitzsimons, I think it is. Lots and lots of late changes, but of course in the new league setup, you have five substitutes. It'll be the same in the championship, so it'll get a bit uh, helter-skelter at times, in particular towards the end of matches. But... Derry have a one-point lead. There's only a minute remaining. Once again, carrying it forward here is Niall McCusker, the 19-year-old. Back helping out his defence is Evan Kelly. Darren Fay. There's time still for me to level this match. John McDermott. Intended for Jody Devine. Comes back. Sean Marty Lockhart. Dermot Dugan. Taking it away here. Fergal McCusker's in the field. There he is taking that ball back from Dermot Dugan. Kicking, but kicking it wide. He was the left half back, of course, on the All-Ireland winning team seven years ago.
Referee says that's going to be a free to me for the wrestling between the two number sevens. I think this has to be it for me. Up towards Ali Murphy. Absolutely surrounded by Mead players. Giles getting it back to Nigel Nestor. Ready to take on anybody. He was pushed. Or was he doing the pushing? The referee has given the signal. And it's going to be a free in for me. I think that was a little bit unlucky actually because the beat player ran directly into the Derry defender there and possibly, you know, the referee could have given a free or just as easy for charging with the ball. Nigel Nestor, the player who has earned the free kick, however. Michael Curley, the referee from Galway, makes the decision. And now Trevor Giles has this to level the match nearly a minute into injury time. He's got four points from three so far. That's out of six. Can he curl it over? He certainly can. And the teams are level in the Church in General National Football League final. And it seems like both sides are going to have an extra day out. 1-12 for Meath, 1-12 for Derry. Derry facing a championship match in seven days' time against Cavan. Meath in four weeks' time against Offaly. And it ends in a draw. That last kick by Trevor Giles, a decision that could just as easily have gone against Meath. But in my view, Anthony Toll was the star player on view this afternoon. He scored a goal and four points. He led with great distinction from midfield. But there were some wonderful performances by players on both teams. And uh, I think both teams have shown us just why they're among the favourites for this year's championship honours. Trevor Giles, you can never keep him down. He has now scored a total of 32 points in the league and there's one more match to come that will be the replay on saturday the 20th of may and there'll be another big crowd here for that